It's worth noting that I just got a message from Scott shortly after I took my last turn, and I think I'm actually going to read this, the transcript from Rim vs. Scott. You can see that the domestic front has uh, settled down. The foreign offices are doing very well. The uh, These guys here have had some fun. And pretty much... Oops. Everything's coming up Millhouse as of this turn. So how did this come to pass? Because this came to pass very rapidly. Let me scroll up in this conversation with Scott. Quote Scott, No, I deleted my trireme for money and then you made a trireme. Me, I was waiting. <laughs> uh, I don't think I could have won anyway. The terrain is so bad I couldn't get Barbarios to kill them, making my Civ's power irrelevant. His Civ had two powers. He's bitching that his two powers were irrelevant in this map. One of his powers is awesome amphibious assaults and uh, safe embarkment. If he wanted to expand into the map, all he had to do was make a small force with like his settlers or whatever and just move them over here. They could defend themselves on the water and they could defend themselves on the coast. He could attack me from the coast. He would have been real dangerous if he'd started putting units out here but he didn't and two his other power is religion he didn't do shit with religion i have a religion he formed a pantheon way after me and i don't know if he'll even get a religion in the game at this point so what exactly happened one my uh, army was able to deal with the barbarian so i haven't dealt with this one yet after i build the shrine notice i'm building two shrines i'm gonna push religion hard because why not uh i'm gonna move up here take care of this barbarian with a new military unit this guy's gonna take care of that i assume this guy's gonna take care of that and then i haven't decided what to do with this military yet i might just have these guys slowly start filtering over to be ready to further bother scott i might have this guy camp here to await settlement i might just build another settlement like right away in this area but I only really need one unit for the time being to hold all that. In fact, as long as I don't push science, I don't have to worry about that at all because Scott is not going to get more advanced units, meaning the barbarians are not going to get more advanced units. He doesn't have enough money or else he would have upgraded these to composite bowmen, which I am sure he can make by now. Actually, I can make them. I don't know if he can make them. Yeah, he doesn't even have any money. So even if he did, he couldn't upgrade. Uh, yeah. Allying with these guys, by continuing to kill those barbarians, I am now strong allies, and soon when I get that those truffles, I'll have even more allies. So these guys are going to be my allies for the rest of the game. And I might just enact uh, Plan Scorpion, where I start sending these guys over, just cranking out military every turn and gifting them all to the city-state. So there's this giant angry power that I don't have to pay anything for, just waiting right there. So I expanded here. I'm gonna expand here, like, as soon as I can. Like, in the next 10 or 15 turns, I'm gonna crank a settler out and send him over there. I've got two triremes, and he deleted his trireme, so I can destroy all of his uh, naval stuff. I'm not gonna attack the cities. I'm not gonna risk that, because if I attack the cities, I probably won't take them. Though it doesn't look like he built walls in either one of these places, so maybe this small army could just take him. But I'm not gonna. I'm gonna play super conservative. These armies are just going to... Uh, the technical term is fuck up his shit. So, I've pillaged all this stuff. Now look, he rushed guys over to repair this iron and protected them with the spearmen. So I just went around, and this is gonna be far more devastating. He's not gonna be too happy on his turn. I pillaged that. I didn't pillage these truffles yet, because it was kind of a pain, but I'm going to pillage them. That's just there because I haven't seen this area of the map yet. And I guess the barbarians like to collect giant bones, but I digress. Uh, I pillage this, and I also pillage the road, disconnecting his cities, which is going to hurt his economy pretty badly. I don't think he can take this out, so maybe he can't. Is this guy... Oh, I forget if his power is to go over the rivers. There's a tiny chance, if that's one of his powers. This guy could attack here after bombard, 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 and kill that companion cavalry. There's a small danger I lost this guy, but I think he'll be okay. I suspect he will still be in my army next turn. Uh, he will not be able to repair all this because he can't protect this guy. As soon as these two guys move off of that spot, I'm going to go right back in and pillage it again. Uh, the only other interesting thing, as soon as this road gets finished and two more sets of building, Jerusalem will be my ally. And then the only city-state left is Prague. Oh, Prague's under attack by those barbarians. 
it would be worth if it weren't for the fact that this is being so effective at disrupting scott's economy it would have been worth it to instead swing down and take out these barbarians thus gaining favor with Prague. but Prague will only give me incense and culture it's actually not super important to be allied with Prague right now so i can actually wait i'll deal with Prague later Prague is also much more well defended than gao or timbuktu Scott's pretty much done in this game. And once again, all I have to do to beat him in these games is bottle him up, make him a little bit afraid of expanding out, and then he's done. He needs to expand a lot quicker onto the map, or he needs to build mega cities and actually use the power of a sieve uh, immensely. He needed to have units out in this water where I couldn't easily attack him with these land units. And he really needed to be pushing religion, which he wasn't.